shifting gears a bit, but just wondering, just uh, in terms of when it comes to data quality and and figuring out what you've got. I mean, what 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 are the keys to evaluating the quality when you're dealing with multiple data sets and putting that together? Sure. So from my perspective, I'm still stuck in quant world. So unfortunately, ideally, I need a sort of normalized data point for every company that I care about ranking, which is like every company. Um, that is this big barrier to monetizing or utilizing data sets that might give me an incredibly specific picture about one company. I don't invest in one company. I rank companies one to 3,000, right? Or one to 50,000. Might sound super boring, but I do not care anything about one company unless I have enough other companies with the same data set to compare it to. Um, so completeness and breadth, I think, is a really big challenge for quants. Um, I have seen, uh, I think, in an attempt to try to capitalize on all of this alternative data, I think some Quants have tried to push the envelope to build smaller and smaller types of models that they stitch together. So um, there's long been a lot of talk about, can't you make a quant model that doesn't need to use all the same factors across a big breadth of stocks, but can just look at the specific KPIs that are relevant for a given industry or a given subset of companies. And I do think folks are getting some success with those kinds of models. The issue then is you're a little bit kicking the problem down the road of now I need to take all of these little bespoke industry models and I still have to stitch them together because I'm still stuck allocating a portfolio of, you know, $100 across a bunch of stocks. And, you know, in the world I live in now, I'm benchmark measured, right? And so it actually really matters whether I do or don't invest in that company that's a pretty big you know, weight in a benchmark. So I'm kind of still stuck needing to um, needing to to rank companies. So I think for me, um, number one breadth, but then number two history, because we're also stuck in a world of, you know, trying to have enough historical data to be able to gain confidence that the patterns um, or the correlations or the interactions that we see are, you know, statistically significant. Uh, like we talked about earlier, quants are stuck exploiting these little small signals. And if you can't apply leverage, which in my products, I can't apply leverage right now, then um, you really, really need uh, to have to be able to sum up a lot of little small predictions. So breadth and then history. And I assume from vendors, I'm going to get high quality data as good as can can be done. I think vendors do their best. Then you just need a system of resiliency and checks to catch what do you do when there's, you know, missing, incomplete or obviously erroneous data. So I think that that's, yeah, you want help from the vendors, but to me, that's actually a part where the quants can create um, a lot of value in their models is you've got to be resilient to knowing that you will have real world messy data and build around that. Mm -hmm. Having a reference data background, I would further add scope, connectivity, point in time, and really entity resolution disambiguation is the strategic linchpin. Um, I mean, I was at FACS that we had a reinsurer as a client and we did an exercise. We basically were mapping all their clients to, to, uh, to, up to the ultimate parent. They had like 20 companies they were, they were insuring that rolled up to the same legal ultimate parent, right? This was crazy, right? It comes back to data connectivity and data governance. If, you, if you're focused on that, you're disciplined about it, um, you create fit for purpose data that can drive all these LLM models and anything else you want to achieve in your organization. Mm -hmm. So I'll echo a lot of the challenges, um, both in having to have a very dedicated model for each industry that we want to look at. We are only able to solve one question at a time, essentially, and then hope that we can have connections in between these questions. Another challenge in the satellite space, we have location as our uniting factor, but then we have to, um, we have to interpolate between time, we have to interpolate between mode, we have to interpolate between um, orbitology simply, so maybe able to catch like one corner of a space but then not the other and then not be able to make that connection. Um, we also have the challenge of just general like data, data usage um, restrictions of what we do have access to, what we don't have access to, what we can pass on um, to a broader space, what is exclusive things along that nature. Um, so all of that is going to prevent us from dealing with our you know, messy real world data and building out more robust models. And uh, I, I love the topic of data quality because with web data collection, web scraping, it's, it's easy to do. People say it's easy to do, we'll do it internally. It's very hard to do well. And it's extremely hard to do well at scale. So if you can, if you can do those things, uh, you, you really have something special. 
the um, the 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 ability also with because things do break, things happen. Data, this type of data is not going to be perfect. Uh, I think importantly, not everybody's expecting it to be perfect uh, all the time. But you have to have a process in place where if something doesn't go right, you have to you know your customer can't be the one figuring that out. You have to be the one telling them. Um, and with the with the people we're dealing with, whether it be our government clients or institutional investors, you know, 90% accuracy doesn't really work. You, you know, you need to you need to be really tight with the with the data quality, um, and that's hard to do. And that's one of the, you know that's that's very hard to do. And we're right on top of it. 